This is our question asked in today's skill rack daily challenge. So we are given two integers x and y as input. And our task is to find the smallest possible even integer which can be formed using the digits in both the integers x and y. So this is the expected output. So let us see how this value is formed. First we are going to find the smallest possible integer that can be formed using the digits of x and y. We are not going to check for any conditions like whether is it even or not. We are just going to form the smallest possible integer. So for the first test case the value of x is 137 and the value of y is 4276. So what we are going to do is we are going to store the digits present in both of the integer in an array. So when we do so the array would be containing the values 137, 4276 which is nothing but the digits of x and y. Now we have to find the smallest. So we are going to sort this array. When we sort our array this is how our new array would be looking like. Now we are going to convert the array elements into an integer. When we do so this would be the integer formed. So this is the smallest possible integer that can be formed using the digits of x and y. Let us see another example. So let us assume that the value of x is now 100 and value of y is now 20. So when we store all the digits present in both x and y into an array, this is how our array would be looking like. So 1, double zero and 2, zero. And when we sort this array, this is how our array would be looking like. And when we try to convert this array into an integer, the integer that would be formed would be 12. But this is not what we want. Because we have to form the smallest possible integer with all the digits present in x and y. Here there are 5 digits. So our output smallest integer should also have 5 digits. So what we are going to do is, after sorting, we are going to check whether the first array index is equal to 0 or not. If it is 0 then we are going to find the next occurring non-zero element present in the array and swap them. So here the first is 0. So we are going to find the next non-zero element. So the second is also 0, the third is also 0 but the fourth is a non-zero and the value is 1. So now we are going to swap this 1 and 0. So the 1 would be coming here and the 0 would be going there. Now when we try to convert this array into an integer, the integer that would be formed would be 1 triple zero 2. So here we can see that the number of digits is 5 and the number of digits in both x plus y is also 5. So this would be the smallest possible integer. So this is just for an example. So for the first test case, we have found the smallest possible integer. Now let us see how to write a program until this. So there are many functions, so let us see one by one. Starting from the main function, initially I have declared some variables. And in the next line I have accepted the values of x and y. And then I have created an array named arr of size 20. And now what I am doing is, I am just storing all the digits present in the integer x into the array arr. So in every iteration I am storing the unit digit of the integer x and then I am dividing the integer by 10 in every iteration until the value of x becomes 0. The same I am doing for the integer y. I am storing the digits present in the integer y into the array arr. And now I have declared a long integer l and i. We have used long because the number that is formed using the digits of x and y can be very big because it is given that the value of x and y can be up to 10 power 8. So we are using long integer and now I am storing the value of l in minimum number that is formed using the digits present in the array of length k. So this is a function and let us see how this function is written. So this is that function min number and this function is of return type long long int. 
because it would be returning a very big values so we are using the return type long long int and in the arguments it accepts an array and the integer k which is the length of the array arr so inside the function again we are declaring a long integer l and setting its value initially to 0 so we would be storing the smallest possible integer in this variable l so let us see how we are doing that first as we discussed we are going to sort this array arr and here using this nested for loop i have applied bubble sort for this array arr so after this execution now our array would be sorted and after sorting we are going to check whether the first index value is equal to 0 or not and if it is then we are going to find the next non-zero element which is present in the array arr using this for loop and if a non-zero element in the array is found then we are just going to swap the values so now the sorted array would be perfect and then we are going to convert this array elements into a integer to do that we are going to iterate through the array elements and in every iteration we are going to apply this formula initially the value of l was 0 and when this for loop finishes its execution the value present in the variable l would be the smallest integer so we are going to return that value so now coming back to our main function here also we have named the long integer l so now the smallest possible integer that can be formed using the digits of x and y is stored in the long integer l in the main function let us see what we are going to do next and then come again to this code till now we have found only the smallest possible integer that can be formed using the digits of x and y our task is to find the smallest possible even integer with the same frequency of this particular integer to do that we are going to run an infinite loop that starts from this particular integer and in every iteration increments its value by 1 and checks whether the number is even and has same frequency or not and if an integer is found then we would break out of the infinite loop but the problem is if there is no even integer present then the loop would be keeping on executing and we would get time limit exit in order to avoid that we are going to break the loop once when the number of digits present in the current iteration is greater than the number of digits present in this particular integer that is this integer has 7 digits in it and while keeping on iterating at one stage the value becomes 8 digits and if it becomes 8 digits and still an even integer is not found it means that there exists no even integer with the given condition so in that case we have to print minus 1 and we can also stop the infinite loop now we have to check for frequency to do that what we are going to do is we are going to create an array of size 10 with all of its value initially 1 and every element present in the array denotes the occurrence of particular digit for example the first element denotes the occurrence of digit 0 and the second element denotes the occurrence of 1 and this denotes the occurrence of 2 and so on until 9 now what we are going to do is we are just going to update this array using this integer in every iteration we are just going to increment the value present in the array for example in this array this particular element denotes the occurrence of integer 7 initially it is 1 but the last value is 7 so we are going to increment its value by 1 so now it becomes 2 so now the first 7 is calculated the next integer is also 7 so again this should be incremented 3 and now 6 and now 6 so this particular array elements denotes the occurrence of 6 initially it is 1 and now we are changing it to 2 because 6 has occurred once and now 4 so this denotes 4 so we are incrementing its value and then 3 2 and 1 so 3 2 and 1 now when we look into this array the actual occurrence of every digit is the element value present in the array minus 1 for example this denotes the occurrence of 0 but the array value is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so the digit 0 has occurred 0 times in this given integer and it is true and now this denotes the occurrence of 1 
so 2 minus 1 is 1 and the integer 1 has occurred only once and similarly and this represents the occurrence of 5 and 5 has not occurred so it is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so this is how the array represents the occurrence of digits in an integer and now what we are going to do is we are going to convert this array into an integer so the value becomes 1 2 2 2 2 1 2 3 double 1 so this is like just a pattern which we are forming and now what we are going to do is we are going to check the frequency of the another integer so it may be any integer in the ith iteration and if the frequency of that particular ith integer is also same as this pattern then we can say that the number of occurrence of every digit in both the integer that is this integer and the ith integer is same so their frequency is same so this is how we are going to check for frequency so now let us go back to our program so we have seen until this now what we are going to do is we are going to check whether the long integer l has at least one even digit in it because if all the digits present in the long integer l are odd then we won't be able to create an even integer at all so we are checking whether the long integer l has at least one even digit in it so we are using a function named has even which i have defined above so let us see that function so again this function accepts a long integer in its arguments and checks whether any of the digit in the long integer n is even or not and if it is the function returns 1 or else the function returns 0 if the function returns 0 then it means that we won't be able to form any of the even integers so what we are going to do is only when the function returns 1 we are just going to create that infinite for loop and if the function has even returns 0 then we can directly print minus 1 as our output which I have did here in the else part because without even a single even integer we won't be able to form a smallest possible even integer so we are just printing minus 1 so now let us see what if the function returns 1 so if the function returns 1 as we discussed we are just going to start our loop from L that is the smallest integer we formed and an infinite loop so here we have used two semicolons which means we don't know when the loop may end so this is an infinite for loop and in every iteration we are checking the frequency of i and l and checking whether the i is an even integer or not and if all these conditions are satisfied then the current value of i is our expected output and we are just going to print the i and terminate our program using this exit zero condition and if the digits present in i is greater than the digits present in l also we can break our loop the reason for which we have already seen and after the execution of this for loop if the i is not found then we are just going to print minus 1 we have to see how this function digit count and frequency works so first let us see digit count the digit count just accepts a long integer l in its arguments and then uh, a variable c is initialized to 0 and until the value of n becomes 0 we are just going to increment the value of c and divide the value by 10 in every iteration so when we do this we would be able to find the number of digits present in the long integer n which would be stored in the variable c so finally we are just going to return this variable c hence we would be able to find the number of digits present in the long integer n so this is how this function digit count works now let us see how this function frequency works so this function frequency accepts a long integer in its arguments and then a new array of size 10 is created and then as we discussed we are just going to set all the values present in the array initially to 1 and now what we are going to do is we are just going to update the frequency of the array element using the unit digit value of the long integer n so here in this while loop we can see that we are just updating the array arr in which the frequency is stored and after the frequency array is updated we are just going to convert it into a integer to convert it into a integer we are going to use this for loop 
and in every iteration as we discussed already we are just going to apply this formula so when the for loop finishes the execution the value stored in l would be a integer value which represents the frequency pattern of the integer n so finally we are just returning the value of n so this is how this function frequency works now let us give sample test cases for our program so the first test case is 1374276 and our expected output is here so we are also getting the same value so now i am giving the sample input 2 and all the digits are odd so we won't be able to form a even integer so our expected output is minus 1 and we are also getting minus 1 now let us give the last test case and for this our expected output is 300456 so we are also getting 300456 now let us also give the maximum possible corner test cases that is 10 power 8 and 10 power 8 so this is the smallest possible even integer which can be formed using the digits of x and y so this is the logic behind today's daily challenge. Thank you for watching.